Hello my friends on YouTube. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. My name's Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. And uh, as you can see, I've got a really fun quilt block on the uh, cutting mat here. And I just wanted to do a really quick video showing you how I put this envelope block together. There were a couple of people in uh, the video that I did on, um, what did I call it? I called it uh, organizing myself. I'll link to the video so you know what I'm talking about. In that video, I was sharing how I was keeping together all the bits and pieces for a quilt project I'm doing that's called You've Got Mail. And it's a pattern that is in a quilting magazine. But what I've discovered is that the envelope block is a pretty common or commonly used uh, block. So I feel okay showing you my method for putting it together. I will tell you, this is not the method <laughs> that is used in the pattern. Because as I made mine, I wound up with two similar blocks. And so instead of having each block being completely unique, I will have a repeat of um, one design twice. And I'm fine about that. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you what I did. So uh, essentially this envelope block, it's two blocks. And uh, it's two what we call a quarter square triangle. So uh, the quarter square triangle turns up on this side where you can see it's two pieces. And then you've got your whole half square triangle over here. And you've got it here, and then you've got it here. And uh, this fabric is my background fabric. So basically what you've got is the body of your envelope. This is like the inside of your envelope, and this is the flap is up. And so you want this fabric to match this fabric. And then this is your background. Uh, some challenges with this uh, particular block is if you have directional fabrics, which I have a lot of directional fabrics, if you are um, really wanting to have all of your prints going the same way every time, you'll have to make each block individually. And uh, so as you can see here, like, uh, this fabric which uh, mimics uh, a knitted fabric it's going this way and then over here it's going this way which is really how you want it so but I'm okay I'm not going to uh, toss out this block because the uh, the V's aren't going this the same way and the same thing with the teapots and everything they're a little bit different so uh, if you have directional prints um, this might make you a little bit crazy <laughs> for a warning uh, but you know I'm okay about it so I'm going forward uh, so anyway you're going to make the two quarter square triangles and then you're going to join them in the center seam now what I did for pressing is I, I just pressed everything to the dark side on the blocks out here the, the two separate blocks and then along the center seam where I joined I pressed that seam open and that just helps when I get a join all of my blocks I can see the little V's which help to indicate where the uh, the points are so that if I want to make sure that I preserve all my points I can easily see that um, so there's a couple of challenges with this block you know it's like um, Deceptively, it looks really easy, and it is, but it's not. You know, there's a lot of that in quilting. Uh, so where you've got to be careful is that, you know, you have so many diagonals, and so that introduces a lot of bias stretch. So uh, starch is your best friend, and you just want to be really careful about how you press everything. And um, so you want to have all of this lined and trimmed up just right, and then, um, you know, you've got to make sure, or you should make sure that these points where you join the small 
uh, quarter square together. You want them to meet as nicely as possible. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, dealing with the bias. So, uh, anyway, let me show you how to put it together. I'll also tell you, I didn't follow her cutting instructions because when whenever you do a full quilt project from uh, really any pattern, uh, they have you cut everything at one time. Everything's cut on the front end, and I just don't do it that way. I have a tendency to set smaller goals and trim my, uh, or cut my fabrics as I go and make my blocks as I go. It's not the most efficient <laughs> use of time, but it's how I do it. So anyway, and it was, we'll just talk about constructing one block. So what you're going to cut is you're going to cut two of your uh, background, I call it the dark background, that's the body of your envelope. And then you're going to want to have one contrast fabric that is like the inside of your envelope. And then you're going to wind up for the background, you're going to wind up having uh, a, a full size square, and then you're going to wind up with a triangle. And uh, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the first thing we're going to do is to match the light fabrics to the dark fabrics. And we'll just mark it just like we do with any half square triangle. So I'm going to line the fabrics up. So I'll take this over to the machine and I'm going to sew on the line and then I'll cut it apart and then I'll take it over to uh, the uh, pressing mat and press it open and when I come back we'll have two half square triangles. So I'll see you back here in a flash. Okay we're back and you can see I've got two beautiful half square triangles and the next thing we want to do is to make our first set of quarter square triangles. And so I'm going to take uh, just one of them. I'm going to put one to the side. And then what I'm going to do is to take the dark fabric and put it right sides facing. What we're going to do is to make another half square triangle. And so we're going to do the same thing where we're going to put that quarter inch line right on the points, turn it around, and draw our second line. So what we're doing is we're going to sew perpendicular to that first seam. And just secure it on all sides. Okay, and I'll come back. And what I'll do when I come back is I'll just show you the sewing and we'll cut it uh, together on camera and you can see what, uh, what we're working with. Okay, I'm back and I've sewn my two lines and when you open Look at what you've got. There's your envelope. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take that long ruler and line up the quarter inch with that seam so that we cut a nice straight line. And you know, even if you think you can do this free-handed, don't do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, don't do it. Uh, even Sherry McConnell on The Quilting Life says, uh, make sure that you always use the ruler and don't try to do it freehand because the second you do it freehand, you're gonna go right through your stitches and you're gonna ruin your fabric. And uh, for me, these are all fat quarters and I don't even think you can get, uh, I know you can't get the rainbow fabric anymore and I, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find this one. I had fat quarter bundles, so I had all this. All right, I'm going to go on over to the um, 
pressing mat and what I'm going to do is to first um, set the seams and then what I'll do is uh, have the dark on top, press to the dark side and press out that way. I'll be back, I'll show you what those look like and I'll show you the really crazy way that we're going to finish out our top. Okay, I've got everything pressed and, uh, you know, again, as I mentioned with the last batch, you know, when you have these directional prints, you know, this would be the ideal setup. Uh, but just because of the way the, the prints go, you're going to wind up with uh, one is going to be going perfectly, the other one's going to be going a little bit off. I'm opting to go and go along with that and be okay with it because I'm really limited on how much of this fabric that I have. And as I put this in the quilt, the quilt is fairly large. It'll be kind of busy. It's got a lot of prints and envelopes and they'll be, you know, spaced out. So I'm fine about it. I will leave that determination to you. Um, these are not done. They'll have to be trimmed down. But what we'll do is we'll trim everything at once and I'll show you how I do that. So we're just going to put those to the side. Okay, this is the kind of the, the crazy way that uh, I came up with for doing this. And, um, you know, we had this extra half square triangle. And uh, what I wound up doing was uh, using, because we need this to complete the, the next block. We just need that half. So I'm going to unpick this. this block. We're going to unpick it and uh, then we're going to and you want to be really really careful about this because you're on a 45 degree so you're going to have uh, it's you know it's a bias edge and so it's really stretchy. Okay everything's apart now what I'm going to do is just press this. I'm going to starch it and get it into place. And what we're going to wind up doing is matching uh, this dark one to the background fabric. But uh, let me get everything pressed. Okay, we're back. Uh, so this light piece, we're just going to put that to the side. That's going to just go back into my, uh, my bin with the rest of uh, the fabric and the blocks that are already made for the quilt. And I may use it in the quilt, I may not. I might just save it for something later. It's a good sized piece, so we're just going to put that to the side. And we're going to concentrate on this one. I know I want that one, because in my envelope, this is the dark, and so I'm going to want this one to butt up against. Isn't that stunning? Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to our background fabrics and uh, I had, just so happens, a triangle left over from the uh, last uh, block that I sewed and it's a little bit of a size difference but uh, because I overcut everything that's fine. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to uh, fasten And I always like to fasten at the front, the end, and in the middle, just to kind of keep everything together. And I'm going to do my quarter inch seam down this way, and then I'm going to press it open, and I'll come back and see you, and you can see the next step. Okay, that uh, half square triangle is all put together, and then I'm going to take a square of background fabric and put that right sides together. And actually what we'll do is just put this one down. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did, which is to mark at the perpendicular to the seam. You know, you thought all that geometry was not ever going to get used in your adult life. And then you decided 
<laughs> to take up quilting and here we are. Oh my gosh, well the geometry. I'll take a little geometry, but the trig is what? The trig is what always got me. Oh my gosh, I had such a hard time in trig. Trigonometry. All those darn triangles. Really had a hard time. Not as bad as calculus. I don't even know how I did that now. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what what we did. <sighs> But I got through it, and I did get an A. I don't know how, but anyway. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, sew on the, both of the lines. And what I do when I make these blocks is I mark my sewing line. And I sew right on the line. And I sew on the line because I overcut all of my initial fabric. We're going to trim that down here uh, all at once. I'll show you that. Uh, but because I overcut my fabric, I don't have to worry about doing scant seams and just having that little, you know, nubbin bit of fabric to trim. Uh, I just go ahead and overcut by half an inch, at least, uh, sometimes a full inch because of seam allowances. And the measurements for these blocks, I'll give them to you. They're not the same as the pattern because I couldn't figure out how to do it as the pattern said. So I came up with my own method. And... Uh, the measurements I'll give you on my um, on my blog, so they'll be over there. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna sew right on the lines, and then um, I'll be back. Okay, so I've sewn on the lines, and we're gonna trim. And I have to tell you, we just had the time change as I'm filming this, and so now it's dark. You know, early. It's always such a shock to the system. So I've lost all of my light since I've been filming this. So if the light is weird or changed, I'm really sorry. I'm doing my best. I'm actually using the grow lights that I've told you guys about to light this whole thing. Okay, so we open it. And look at that. There's our beautiful envelope. Okay, I'm going to take it over and give it a nice press. And be right back. And uh, then we're going to trim. I'll show you how I trim these down. Okay, we're back, and I've replaced my flat mat with this absolutely wonderful rotating mat. I love this thing. Uh, this is one of my newest investments, and I love it so much. I do so much work with half square triangles and quarter square triangles, and oh my gosh, you know, when you trim them down, if you have to turn the block, you just run the risk of getting something messed up. And with the mat, you set all your stuff up and you cut each side and you just turn your mat. It's such a wonderful thing. So, okay, we're going to trim just like we would trim half square triangle. And I have a full video on making those if you need more information. But, uh, you know, there are many ways to accomplish the same goal. And finding the way that works for you is what's really most important. What I share with you here is what works for me. So if it's not something that resonates with you, that is fine. There are other methods and other ways. And, you know, you can certainly find the way that works for you. But this is what I do. Um, I like to have the square ruler that's the size for the block that I need. Now I know this gets expensive because it's a lot of rulers, but you don't have to buy them all at once. And the reason I like to do it this way is because I have a lot of trouble keeping all of the lines and the fractions and the little tick marks and the whole thing. I have a really hard time keeping that organized in my brain. It's very hard for me. So uh, for me to be accurate, I have found that it helps me to have the uh, ruler and the size that I need. And that's just my method. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to line up on this ruler. There's this, like a diagonal. And we want to match that to our center seam. And we want to have that matched to this end and this end and the line following the seam 
And when you're dealing with a quarter square triangle, what you also want to be looking at is in this corner. You want to have you want to have the uh, corner of the ruler match this seam. Now there's no line to match up, but if you don't have this corner at the seam, this is going to be a little bit off when you get to piece everything together. So, you know, you got to just sort of um, fiddle around with it until everything lines up where it should. This one's a little harder to see because of the uh, the black line on the black fabric. Uh, so what I want you to see also is that, you know, I told you about oversizing. I overcut the initial pieces and then trim back. If I hadn't have oversized it as much as I did, when you get down to this bottom edge, I mean, there's really nothing hardly at all to come off. And so if this piece were much smaller, I'd have some trouble getting this lined up. And I just turn, turn the mat, not the work. And then when you're doing it, you want to have uh, part of your hand on the mat and part of your, and just fingers pressing down to hold that ruler in place. It's so easy for everything to get shifted. And nothing is worse than being at this last step of trimming down and messing it up. And there you have it. And it's absolutely perfect. And so this is my trimmings. It's not that bad. I don't think. <laughs> I will take it. Okay, and then uh, let's look at the envelope. This is the top of the block. So we put that diagonal line on the ruler the first thing I do is I match that to the seam and then the next thing I'm going to want to do is to get my corners lined up and this one it's going to be off a little bit because of the way that I uh, cut the initial fabric. It's going to be off just a little bit. This is what happens when you rush to make a video before it's dark. I just rushed too much to get this done. So that top is going to be off a little bit, you can see here. But it's good because then you can see the, the so-called mistake because it'll be off a little bit when we piece this block and then what you do is you put those together like that and see how these line up perfectly but that one's off but you know what I can live with it it's okay Let's see how the other ones trim All right, I got these joined along the central line and you can see that uh, what I've done is pressed that center seam open. And uh, so I've got a really, I'll have a perfect point on this side. This side's going to be off just a touch because I was off a little bit in the piecing, but I am not going to lose my mind over it. And same type of thing here, good sharp point here, it'll be off a little bit on that top, on this side. But you know what? I'm okay about it because I feel like done is better than perfect. And it was a really good way to show you that uh, the overcutting makes a big difference. So uh, what you do basically is you finished your, you, you decide what your finished size of your block is. So mine are eight and a half inch blocks. 
which is why I'm using an eight and a half inch ruler. And so those initial squares are all going to be cut at 10 inches, which I know it sounds like a lot, but you cut an inch and a half oversized because of all the seam allowances and the trimming down. And by the time you get to this point, you really only have that little bit that comes off to trim it to the eight and a half. So I probably trimmed those background squares a little small, but that's okay. It's a learning experience and I can still use them. So, all right, that is the envelope block. I hope that helps. I'll have a blog post up for you also that will give um, more steps or it gives you to me, it helps to have both the video explanation and the written with the pictures. That's how I can best figure these things out. So that's what I'll give you. And I'll, this is not the instructions that came in the magazine, and they're not the instructions. It's not the same sizing either. I sized them a little bit differently. So I feel okay showing you how to make the block. And if you want to make that quilt, which it's adorable, I would totally totally recommend the quilt i can't wait to get mine together and uh have uh have my you've got mail quilt all ready to go okay that's it uh thanks for watching as always i appreciate you being here i hope you got something out of the video and i will see you around the youtubes and until then happy quilting